Hello. I wanted to make a short video today about one particular paint colour, and that's raw umber. Um, when I first took classes in watercolour painting uh, over 30 years ago, raw umber was one of the only nine or ten colours that my teacher, my watercolour teacher, recommended we have in our palette. Um, those colours were warm and cool versions of the three primaries, red, yellow and blue, and three earth tones, three or four earth tones, which were burnt sienna, yellow ochre, raw umber, and possibly burnt umber. Um, now the brand I started off using uh, all those years ago was uh, Windsor & Newton. And their raw umber was this very nice, quite light brown, warm uh, shade that was very useful for painting the kind of the colour of stone that we have around here in Yorkshire, in the north, northwest of England. And I've got some examples here of drawings that I've done over the past seven or eight years um, of the buildings, the houses, here in Saddleworth mostly. And you can see they have this sort of warm, warm brown colour. A few years ago, I switched to the SAA brand on the recommendation of another teacher I had at the time. And I was surprised to find that the raw umber in that brand was very different, uh, much redder than the Windsor & Newton, um, and not at all useful for painting stone. Um, now, I've just recently, um, and I'll, I'll put some references in the notes below, but I've just been reading about uh, earth tones, um, and particularly the pigment that raw sienna, sorry, raw umber is made from, and that's PBR7, which is brown pigment number seven. And it turns out that it varies very widely from one brand to another. Um, and the Windsor & Newton one, um, is not is not favoured by by many watercolour artists it seems because it's very light much lighter than it apparently should be um, uh, Jane Blundell for example on her excellent website uh, which I'll reference below um, she says that raw umber should be uh, where is it a dark a dark brown, uh, a cool dark brown. Um, but like with most things in life, um, the colours you have in your palette uh, is very much down to personal preference. And I personally have always uh, liked the Windsor & Newton Raw Umber. I found it very useful. Um, so in a bid to find um, a Raw Umber to replace the SAA, which I really don't like. Um, I thought I'd do a little experiment and comparison, and I'm going to show you that now. Now this is the Windsor & Newton raw umber. The one that I, uh, this is in a palette that I've had over 30 years, and I've just cleaned it up, and I'm going to revive it and start using it again. It's a lovely, rich, warm, brownish ochre colour. And now, I'm going to show you the SAA, which I've been using for the past couple of years. 
and I was rather disappointed to find that it's a totally different colour, much much closer to burnt sienna, so it's more reddish. And it just doesn't enable me to to achieve the Yorkshire stone colours for the buildings around here. So I've just bought raw umber by Daniel Smith and I'm gradually adding to my my palette um, Daniel Smith colours which are of course excellent quality so let's see how this is well different again much browner in fact I would have said it was almost like Burnt umber. Very different. So not quite what I was expecting. But I found that by mixing the Daniel Smith raw umber with a little bit of yellow ochre, I can actually achieve something similar to the Windsor and Newton raw umber. There we go. Quite similar. Here are the results of my little raw umber experiment. And I've written in the, the brands and the names of the paint that I've used.